My next guest is the political commentator and UK lead at Young Voices, Jason Reid. Jason, wh wh where do you think we're at when it comes to children and obesity? Because it's so easy for parents, isn't it, with busy lives to give them packets of crisps or you know, even snacks that purport to be healthy, whether they're fruit-based, chocolate bars. Um, what advice would you give to parents bringing up children to help make sure their children maintain a healthy weight? Well, given the uh, the way the childhood obesity discourse is going at the moment, my primary piece of advice to parents would be don't worry about it so much because the way we measure childhood obesity makes it seem like a much bigger problem than it actually is. If you look at the statistics um, where the, of the government measuring what proportion of children of different ages are obese, uh, it seems like there's a huge drop. Um, between the ages of 14 and 16, it seems like children are losing lots of weight. In reality, of course, they're not. It's just that the way we measure adult obesity is very different to the way we measure childhood obesity because we're using old data, uh, we're using unscientific numbers, and so the numbers are inflated, and so you get dramatic headlines about uh, millions of obese children, um, even at very young ages when they start primary school, and it's just not reflected in reality. I'm very concerned that uh, the obesity crisis, which is a very real issue, is just being used by the public health lobby to expand the nanny state to push through all kinds of harmful policies which don't make us any healthier, but do roll back our civil liberties and compromise our, our basic freedom of choice. So what sort of harmful policies would they be that, that, that you're, you're pointing out that the nanny state might introduce to try and stop kids from getting fat? Well, there are two main uh, policy recommendations that have been put forward and implemented in other countries as well. The first one is around sin taxes, um, so sugar taxes in particular. The hope would be, and the uh, proponents of that policy claim, that uh, by taxing sugar you would in incentivize the food industry to reformulate their recipes, to find ways to use less sugar, and so make us all healthier. In reality, I don't think that would happen at all. If there was a way to make a chocolate bar taste just as good and cost just as much without any sugar in it, it would have happened already, and the person who came up with it would be a billionaire. Uh, all that's going to happen is you pass the costs on to consumers, which means you make all our shopping bills more expensive, you make the poor poorer, you exacerbate economic inequality, and you don't make anyone any healthier. The other policy that the government is uh, in favor of at the moment is the junk food advertising ban, uh, a clamp down on online and uh, TV and radio advertising for what it deems to be unhealthy food, there are countless problems with that, such as the fact that the government's definition of junk food includes things like yogurt and marmite and mustard. Um, it includes a lot of foods that is uh, obviously not junk food and isn't contributing to obesity in any meaningful way. The government's own research into that policy estimates that it will remove on average 1.7 calories from children's diets per day. That's for context roughly the equivalent of half a Smartie. So almost no effect at all. It's not going to make anyone any healthier, but there is a huge cost to it because we're hamstringing entire industries, the advertising industry, the broadcast industry, and of course the food industry, just at a time when we need economic growth the most when we're coming out of the pandemic. Those are the kinds of policies I'm talking about which get pushed through because, um, because of the obesity crisis, but that don't actually achieve anything. And I think that Boris Johnson uh, really should think much more carefully about this. He was elected to the leadership of the Conservative Party and to be Prime Minister on a platform of uh, rolling back the continuing creep of the nanny state, as he put it. Uh, but since then, of course, he came down with COVID and he became very ill. And he puts that down to the fact that he was overweight. He said, to quote him, he said, I was too fat. Um, and then he went and, and lost a lot of weight, which is great for him, but he did that on his own. But he now seems to believe that the rest of us, in order to be able to lose weight, we need all this rampant government intervention in our lives in order to help us lose weight. I just don't buy it. And even if that was the case, that we did need government help, this is not the way to do it. Because all it does, as I say, is uh, make the poor poorer without actually making us any healthier.